let's go back to the story we began the program with tonight. This is the former chief judge of New Zealand's Employment Court who's saying that it may be worthwhile for courier drivers or someone representing them to test their situation in court. Now, we've been looking at this for a fortnight now. This is the situation of drivers who are called independent contractors but really seem to have thoroughly dependent uh, relationships. They are contractually bound to only drive for the one company. They buy their own van. They pay for the signage to go on the side. They pay for their uniform. Uh, at what stage does the label of them as independent contractors rather than employees become disingenuous? I asked uh, the former head of the Employment Court, Graham Colgan. The label is is meaningless as far as the law is concerned. The, the, the law is concerned with substance rather than form. Um, so the, the test that, that is now applied is under Section 6 of the Employment Relations Act 2000. Um, and the test is uh, to, to find out what is the real nature of the relationship between the parties. Now, I think as your previous program may have highlighted, there are some guidelines how to, how to apply that test, um, the control, the integration and the fundamental guidelines, but ultimately a court has to determine what's the real nature of the relationship and in fact whether it is a relationship of employment of the employer and the employee and, the, and that's, the, that's the formula. And there seems in law to be a precedent, and that is Cunningham versus TNT from 1992. Yes, but that was decided, um, although it was decided by the Court of Appeal, so it's authoritative, it was decided under a different definition of an employee. That was under the Employment Contract Act 1991. The, the Cunningham case um, was a case of a courier driver who's contract was ended and he um, he brought personal grievance proceedings saying he'd been, uh, been unjustifiably dismissed. TNT challenged that on a preliminary point, saying he wasn't an employee and that was what the case was about. Mm. Uh, the, the, the Court of Appeal took what lawyers sometimes term as a, as a black letter law approach. They, they said that the case was really determined on the written contract between the parties, which said they were independent contractor and principal, not employer and employee. Uh, and so although the Employment Court had found that Mr Cunningham was an employee, the Court of Appeal said no, he was an independent contractor, and there uh, the matter finished um, in that case and for courier drivers, so far as I'm aware, uh, for a number of years. How does this work? Because this is case law, isn't it? So does somebody have to take a case, yeah. and does that case become the universal yeah. and the particular? Yes, and I, and I know, I think you talked to Darian Fenton a, a day or so ago about changing the statute, and that, of course, is, is one way of doing it. It's a slow way, and um, I think it, it wouldn't be controversial to say that there'd be significant resistance from courier companies to, to such a legislative change. There are some ways um, that people who on their own can't afford to bring what would be expensive litigation because it would go probably right to the Supreme Court and take some time and a lot of money to do. But there are, there are, uh, there are ways of doing that. Um, if, for example, if courier drivers were able to establish that they were being paid less than the minimum wage, they may be able to persuade a labour inspector from the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment to bring a, uh, a wage arrears claim, which would raise this issue in the, in the courts. The other way is to do what Mr Cunningham did back in 1992, and is, is, is for a courier driver who, whose contract is ended to say, I've been dismissed, I want a personal grievance. Uh, and, and again, that issue of status would arise those vehicles would launch a case into the court system. Um, as I say, it would probably be removed to the Employment Court, it would then go to the Court of Appeal mm. and probably to the Supreme Court. So it's, it's, it's not slow. There, there are ways around... Sorry, there, there are ways to allow that to be funded. And I've got a couple of recent examples that people might not um, be aware of. The, what we call the sleepover cases a few years ago and the more recent pay equity cases 
were all very expensive cases taken by low-paid employees that went right through the court system. Uh, they were funded by a combination of a union helping those people who were either members or potential members and lawyers who were prepared to put their names on the line and take those cases for significantly reduced fees. Um, there are two other possibilities open in, um, in my view. One is the phenomenon of litigation funding, and there are now litigation funding companies in New Zealand and Australia that are prepared to look at taking a share of the proceeds of litigation in return for funding it so that no one's out of pocket. There could also be a class action potentially brought by courier drivers. And as I say, um, there may be a union that's prepared to take on their case um, for them. So there are a, n a number of avenues uh, to ensure that impecuniosity doesn't mean that these cases aren't brought. And if the cases are brought, and, and, and as you're saying, it, it really only requires one, given that this is case law, then that change would be meaningful. In other words, a successful case could potentially change the status of independent contractors who are in these kind of permanent relationships. Yeah, it, it would depend on the particular form of contract that the drivers have with a particular company. But so long as the general principle was established that, that they are employees and that other companies have similar contracts, then what is likely to happen is that the industry would need to reevaluate the position and, uh, and, and, and make some changes, even though they hadn't been a defendant in the, in the court proceedings. This is fascinating, isn't it? Graham Coughlin, who's the former head of the uh, Employment Court and an employment lawyer for 40-odd uh, for, for years.